get the show started. Hello, everyone. Thank you all for joining. Welcome to Indianism Lightning Talks. I'm your host, Parag Kartkar, and I'm the head of consulting practices at Indianism. We have several awesome Lightning Talks lined up for you in the upcoming weeks. Uh, Lightning Talks are hosted every Thursday at uh, 5 15 p.m. Eastern Time. And each week, one of our practice area consultants uh, shares their knowledge on the evolving technology trends in the industry that will help you keep learning and growing in your career. And this week, uh, Michael Bickerton, who is a lead iOS engineer with us, will give us an overview of Swift Actors. Uh, Swift Actors are a part of large set of concurrency changes introduced in Swift last year, and uh, they aim to solve data races in a clean and easy way. And I'm looking forward to understanding how Swift Actors work and how we should use them. So without further ado, let's get it started, Michael. Great. Uh, yeah, thank you, Parag, for the introduction. Um, as mentioned, I'm Michael, and I'm one of the iOS engineers here at InRhythm. Um, I'm looking forward to diving into tonight's topic. But uh, before we begin, I actually want to briefly call out some of the recent mobile-focused lightning talks the team here at InRhythm uh, has done over the last couple of months. Uh, all of our lightning talks are uploaded to YouTube, so feel, feel free to uh, you know, go check some of them out at your convenience. Um, and we've had some great presentations recently on things like cross-platform mobile testing, dependency injection, Jetpack Compose versus XML, and then async await in Swift, which is another recent cur currency change that was introduced last year. We also have a couple of upcoming mobile-focused lightning talks on additional topics like Kotlin multi-platform and Swift UI environment variables. So you'll definitely want to tune in for those as well. With that said, let's get into this evening's topic, uh, which is Swift Actors. I'm going to spend the next few minutes briefly walking through what an actor is and what problem it solves for Swift developers. Uh, but first, I want to provide a little bit of context. What you see in front of you is what I will call the Swift type family tree. Historically, Swift had a handful of foundational types that can be broken out in a couple of different ways. On the right, you have what are called compound types, which are tuples and functions. On the left, you have named functions, uh, which are called as such because, well, these are things you can name when they're initially defined. Let's hone in on those named functions a little bit. Out of the box, Swift provided a handful of named types, like enums and structs, which are value types, and classes, which are reference types. However, a new foundational type was recently introduced, and that is the actor, the topic of tonight's discussion. So you may be wondering, what is an actor? Uh, in summary, it's a reference type, like a class, that helps to eliminate data races. It was introduced last fall with Swift 5.5 and is part of several concurrency updates that shipped last year, such as the previously mentioned async await. You also may be wondering what a data race is. Uh, in generic terminology, it's when two or more threads attempt to manipulate or mutate the same data concurrently. At best, uh, this can lead to inconsistent or unpredictable behavior, and at worst can cause your app to crash. These issues can often be tricky to debug and track down in production, and in general, they are, of course, things you would want to avoid. So with that said, let's dive into an example here. In front of us, we have the code for a very simple inventory management system. This class has a dictionary of items in its inventory and two methods to add an item to the inventory and then to get an item from the inventory. You may be wondering why we don't have any code to remove an item from the inventory, and uh, I'm not sure I have a good answer for you. We'll just say that this inventory management app is still in development and not quite ready for release. Now, initially, this code may appear to be just fine, and in many cases, frankly, it could be. Um, however, if you're working with this class in a multi-threaded context, you run the risk of running into issues. As it's set up now, it's not thread safe and is prone to data races. If two or more threads attempt to access the store items dictionary we have defined up here, we could run into unpredictable behavior. Now, this is a problem that uh, developers have been trying to solve for some time. And one of the ways that we could solve for the data race problem historically was to use dispatch queues. If you take another look at the class now, it's been modified to use a dispatch queue to asynchronously read from and write to the store items dictionary via the add items to inventory and get item from inventory methods. And because this queue is asynchronous, we can no longer just return your inventory item when we call get item from inventory. We have to wrap that value in a completion handler that will return our inventory item to us when it is ready. This adds complexity to the class and makes it uh, more difficult to maintain moving forward. However, uh, there's now a better way forward, and that is actors. 
To reiterate, actors are a new kind of reference type that you can use with just the actor keyword. So if you look again at the example code that we have on screen here, we've replaced the class keyword with the actor keyword and removed all of the extra code, like our dispatch queue, that was required previously to make that code thread safe. With just this one simple swap of a keyword, our class is now automatically thread safe. Actually using an actor in an asynchronous context is fairly straightforward. In front of us, we have an inventory interface class called inventory interface, uh, which for the purpose of this demo, we can think of as a kind of glue or connector piece to a hypothetical UI component. In this class, we define an instance of our store inventory manager that we've been looking at. And then inside of get item for display, we make a call to get item from inventory. All we need to do is add the await keyword in front of that call. And in doing so, we will automatically grab that inventory item when it is our turn to do so and is safe to do so. If it so happens that there was nobody else in line waiting to grab that data, we would grab it immediately. In other words, actors create an implicit queue of data requesters that, in this case, access the underlying store item dictionary synchronously or in order. So at a high level, that is what a Swift actor is and what some of the benefits are that it can provide and why you would want to use it versus some of the um, older or more traditional methods to handle data races like dispatch queues. But I do want to cut, touch on a couple of additional items. Um, actors are a reference type, uh, like a class, as I mentioned, and they can have, for example, properties, methods, etc. But there are a couple of distinctions that you'll want to keep in mind. They don't yet support inheritance, although this is something that is being considered for the future. And additionally, unlike classes, they can only execute one method at a single time. The other caveat is that actors are required to be interacted with asynchronously. You may have noticed earlier during my example that the method that called into one of my store inventory managers methods was marked as async. Lastly, I think etymology is fun. So I was curious, why are they called actors? What does that mean? I'll actually leave that as an exercise for the viewer. Uh, the actor concept is not new. It's actually been around since the early 1970s and there's a wealth of resources online you can reference if you'd love to learn more. And on that note, while I was doing my research for this topic, there were several useful, useful links that I came across that I'd love to share. The first is the initial Swift evolution proposal for actors. It does a great job of outlining what an actor is, why you'd want to use it, and how you would use it. The second is actually a Wikipedia article on the actor model itself and where it originated from. It's actually quite extensive and links to several sub articles around actors, uh, what they are, and why you would use them. And then lastly, uh, because actors were just part of the large concurrency changes that were introduced in Swift last year. Um, I do think it's valuable to check out the Swift language guide on concurrency, which touches on actors, async await, async await, and other elements of concurrency in the Swift language. Uh, but with that said, that wraps up everything I have to share with everyone uh, tonight about Swift actors. So are there any questions? <laughs>